All right, you want my hot take? Yeah, let's hear the hot take. I don't think the Pats will ever get a number one receiver. Oh, that's a, ooh, I didn't I don't think, think that think was coming. They will ever have a number one receiver. Oh! Okay, the heat check is brought to you by Eastern Propane and Oil. They're in your neighborhood. Woo! Let me tell you something. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? They haven't had a number one receiver, Mike. I mean, other than the one year of Randy Moss, which was kind of unintentional. And what I mean by that is they traded a fourth-round pick where he was sort of, uh, disp- uh, you know, exposed, um, disposable. You know, I mean, you know what I mean. It wasn't right. like they targeted and paid a number one receiver. The last time they did it, last time they had it, maybe Terry Glenn. So th- this isn't – they've pretty much gone a full 40 years <laughs> without really – I mean, yeah. Mike – Without really trying to get a number one receiver, paying a number one receiver, or having a number one receiver outside of the Randy Moss year. But again, I think that was a little accidental. They weren't targeting that. The Stefan Diggs, look, he was only a second round pick. So that is the kind of guy they might be involved in, but apparently they're nowhere close to that. They're not going to give up the, the number one receivers that have moved, Mike. Tyreek Hill, um, Devontae Adams, okay? Those guys got first round picks in return. And they were paid at the tippy top of the market. Right, right. Record-setting contracts. Jonathan Kraft isn't going to do that. Jonathan Kraft is not going to set the market for a receiver contract. So forget about trading for that guy. Now you have to draft that guy. And the odds are you're not going to draft the guy. You may try. You're not going to draft. Yes, you will. You're not going to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. here at three. Yeah, but you don't have to. I think you're better next year. So maybe you have a, the 10th pick or the 12th pick. Are you going to go receiver there? And if you are, what are the odds are you hitting? And here's another one. Even if you do hit, are you going to pay him on the second contract? I don't think the Crafts will. They will. It's been damn near 40 years without a number one receiver. I think we're looking at another 40, Mike. How's no, that? No, no, I don't. That's a, that's a hell of a – that's probably like three or four heat checks. That wasn't a heat check. That is like uh, that, that is like a burning forest right there. You got, uh, you got fires all over the place. But I'm going to tell you this. Well, you where's he coming to. from? You, well, look, you don't have to. You don't have to uh, trade for that number one guy. You really don't. You know why? Because I think wide receivers, this is where I thought you were going. I think wide receivers are about to become like running backs. They're going to be so plentiful. Famous uh, last words. Pretty, pretty so Watch, watch, watch. The supply, the supply of wide receivers is, is, exp- is growing exponentially. The true, the true number it's, one? Watch, watch. Will they pay them? Well, if if, I, I, well, if I, they draft that guy, okay, so again, this year they'll be drafting probably, we think, maybe the fifth, sixth receiver on the board. I don't know. Probably. It's okay. somewhere in the, that, that second round pick. Even if they hit on him, long odds, will they pay him? No. You know why? But it has something to do with uh, uh, Jonathan Kraft and the cheapness of the Patriots. You know what it has to do with? The position. I'm telling you, we're, we're at an inflection point at the wide receiver position where everybody who has a brain will be able to get a good wide receiver. If you think about it right now, you I can didn't see I did say it. good. Yeah, okay. They'll How about great? Number hey, one. You're, okay, you, you're going to see it. true, true number Mike, one guy. if you think about it right now, because there's going to be plenty of them in the draft. I'm not even concerned about it. That's why I told you I softened a bit on the didn't get Keenan Allen for the fourth round pick because they're going to be so many, they're going to be so many wide receiver options over the next two to three years out of college football. Guys who used to play running back are going to start playing wide receiver. You can see it now. They're going to be more Debo Samuel type. You can be like, God, that guy looks like a wide uh, a running back. Yeah, he, w- he used to be, but he sees the money is at wide receiver. He's going to play wide receiver. There's a guy right now out of uh, South Carolina, uh, South Carolina who's going to be a first, late first or early second round pick. Xavier Leggett, same thing. Running back body, but playing wide receiver. The Patriots will get wide receivers, and so will everybody else in football. And on those second contracts, they, a lot of those guys won't get paid because there's going to be another batch coming through in college football. That's my, that, that's my hot take. That is my hot take. It's not that hot of a wide, take. Wide receivers a new running back? R- r- running backs are the new – wide receivers are the new running backs. Watch. Okay. Tommy Curran is Come also on big on the Patriots getting a stud at the X receiver this coming season, as he described last night on Quick Slants. You ever go to the store, spend some time, come back home and realize you got the wrong thing? And then you have to go all the way back to the store and try and return it. And they might not take it and you have to throw it away. Or worse yet, you think you have the right thing, you get it home, you try and develop it, you think it's going to work, it's not what you want. 
It's kind of a Patriots experience, a wide receiver for, oh, I would say the last decade and a half. And they gotta cut it out. And the best way to cut that out is to draft and develop. And this is a prime draft for the Patriots to draft and develop a wide receiver. All right, bringing Greg Bedard to the Boston Sports Journal. Drafting and developing, having good receivers. Yeah, they'll, they'll have good receivers, and Mike's right. There's a lot of them out there. But to pay the premium on the guy and then to pay the guy, I don't know. I'm, I'm dubious, but do they have to draft a receiver this year, Greg? Yeah, I, without question. At least one, maybe two, maybe three. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't really know. But... Mike, your point about they're not going to pay for wide receiver, they're not going to get that guy. Did you forget about Calvin Ridley? I mean, they offered him $22 million a year. Yeah, I mean, which that is like... just happened a few weeks ago. So to say the Patriots are just going to ignore wide receiver. But he's not a just, true number one. That's your opinion as a noted uh, NFL personnel guy. Uh, but they <laughs> you know, so wow. him. Okay. Oh, immediately the attack my credentials. Oh, coming on, that, coming hot that, today. Too easy. Go ahead. Uh, but uh, I, I do, I do expect you know once they get through, once we get through the draft, uh, perhaps in the lead up to the draft, draft weekend. Um, I, I am still expecting them to make a move for a number one wide receiver. I'll be disappointed if they don't. I think they need that. But I do think, for the most part, it's going to be through draft and develop. And I, I, I agree totally with Michael that what you are going to see, and this is sort of the Kansas City Chiefs model that teams are going to, where they say they saw the Chiefs because they had the transcendent quarterback that they're paying. They are leaving it up to those quarterbacks to elevate uh, a mediocre receiver room. Now, the first piece of the puzzle, the Patriots have to get the quarterback, and they <laughs> right. have to pay the quarterback. But that's what I'm talking and about. And that's a long ways down the, the road. The Packers are doing that. I like their young receiver core. I don't think there's a true number one top ten receiver in that group. I don't think that Watson they draft. could be. I don't think so. I don't think he is, Greg. If he stays healthy. Uh, I, I think he's a nice player, and I think they have nice players in that room. There's no true number one. So, look, if you've got a great re uh, quarterback, I actually like that. I actually like putting it on the quarterback to elevate those around him. I think that's okay as long as you surround him with good players. I'm just saying, that number one, that Tyreek Hill, okay. that guy, yeah, who, who is not with that here? guy anymore? I mean, the Kansas right. City Chiefs didn't have, have anybody. Him. Travis Kelsey wasn't even what he exactly. normally is. Right. And you look at the Packers team that won a Super Bowl uh, with Aaron Rodgers, you know, Donald Driver, Jordy Nelson, right. Greg Jennings, okay. James Jones. So the question is. None so of you, them are number one. All right. So, so, so you guys let, agree with me. Let me. Well, let me ask you guys this. All right. What's more important? We're really freestyling now. Now, now I'm really thinking about this. What's more important, that number one guy that Felger talks about, Greg, or is it more important to have a really smart offensive coordinator uh, like Matt LaFleur is, like, you know, Ben Johnson is, Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan. We have a smart offensive coordinator who knows how to scheme up twos and threes I like in the absence of number ones. Because, hey, hey, Greg, um, this is just for Felger. Hey, the Patriots have Alex Van Pelt. That is just as important. Uh. As no, having a number one. Listen, what's more important? No, seriously. What do you think is more important? I'd rather, I'm sorry, just jump in. I would rather have a offense that is excellent quarterback, excellent scheme, with good receiving options spread throughout the offense, as opposed to the number one guy. I'd rather have that guy. That's what they're trying to build. That's what that's sort of the Packer way. They are going to have a bunch of really good number twos, and they're going to come through the draft, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth round guys, just like the Packers okay. have done with Watson, well, Dobbs, Reed, all these guys. That didn't take long for you actually to agree with me. They're going to have a bunch of number twos. Did you hear them? And I don't know football, he says. Okay, well, all right. Then neither of us know football, Greg, because we're on the same page. I, he called I you a noted, a noted personnel guy. It was really. No, it was vicious. It was sharp. I'm, that I'm was sharp. Savage.